Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Prospect Charter School's Algebra 1 course. Today we are going to be going over the midpoint and distance formulas. So the midpoint and the distance formulas are useful in that they let you find halfway between a location and an absolute location or an absolute distance between two places. This is super useful in things like navigation, engineering, and pretty much anything that you deal with that has to do with a distance. Biology actually uses it as well for figuring out how tall a tree is. So the midpoint and distance formulas are pretty simple. First, we need to know what a midpoint is. The midpoint, according to the textbook definition, is the point on the line, the point on a line segment that turns the line segment into two equal line segments. So for an example, if this was my line segment from A to B, and I had a spot right here that I called C, would C be the midpoint? And the answer to that question is no, because this is a lot smaller than this one, so they are not equal, therefore that is not the midpoint. So how would we find the midpoint from A to B? Well, the first step is to find the distance. And fortunately, we can do that pretty easily. You just count. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the distance is 10 units. To cut that exactly in half, you would multiply it by one half, and you would get five units. So we go over five units, and that will be the midpoint. One, two, three, four, five. And this point, C, cuts this into two sections, where we have one, two, three, four, five on the left, and one, two, three, four, five on the right. Therefore, C is the midpoint of line segment AB. So how do you calculate a midpoint? Well, calculating a midpoint is actually pretty easy. I know you guys know a little bit about taking the average in a class. For an example, if you have a test score that was a 100 and then another test score that was an 80, to find the average, you would add them together and then divide them by the number of things that you have. So in this case, it would be 180 over 2, which gives us 90. This is what is often called the average in schools. Well, finding the midpoint is very similar to finding the average, except instead of looking at scores, we're looking at x-coordinates and y-coordinates. So to find the midpoint, use the formula x2 plus x1 divided by 2. And then for the y-coordinate, you would do y2 plus y1 divided by 2. This will give you your midpoint. So this is your midpoint formula. So if I'm looking at a graph, and let's say that I am given two points, one at 1, 1, and the other at 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. And let's make it 4, 3. And I want to find the midpoint of this line segment. To do that, I use my midpoint formula. 
I know this point in the red on the right is 1, 2, 3, 4, comma, 3. And the blue point's location was at 1, comma, 1. So given that information, I know what my x2 is. My x2 is 4, my x1 is 1. So to find the x coordinate, I would go x2 plus x1 divided by 2. Or in this special case, we would have 4 plus 1 divided by 2. And then for the y coordinate, again, it's y2 plus y1 divided by 2. Our y2 is 3, our y1 is 1, so this would be 3 plus 1 divided by 2. Which of course gives us 5 halves, comma, 2. So the midpoint would be at 5 halves, comma, 2. And if you ask why, Mr. O'Neill, why do you not turn that into a decimal, it's because decimals lie to you. I don't like decimals. Decimals are evil, they do bad things, they make you miss problems because you round at the wrong spot. They're bad. If you leave it as a fraction, you will never have that problem. If you leave it as a mixed fraction, for an example, 5 halves was really 2 and 1 half, when you work with this, can you do anything with it? Can you multiply? Can you add? Can you subtract? Can you divide? And the answer to that question is, well, yeah, but you turn it back into five halves to do that. No point to it. Why make more work for yourself? Leave it as five halves. Improper fractions are the best fractions. So let's do another portion of this thing for today. And that other portion is the distance formula. So the distance formula comes from something you already know. You guys know about Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem is that when you have a right triangle that you have a side A, a side B, and a side C, you have A squared plus B squared is always set equal to C squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem. It's been around for a very long time. Now for the distance formula, believe it or not, is the same thing, except that we solve for the C. So if we were to solve for the c on this one, we'd have c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now if I was to put this on an axis, then you'd have an x portion and a y portion. The x portion would happen to be associated with the a, and the y portion would be associated with the b. So plugging that in, we would get c is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, unfortunately, we need to know that this x portion is the distance from one piece to another on the x. So to find that distance, you would say the square root of your second x minus your first x coordinate. And that would give you the distance between the two of them. And of course the same thing with the y. y2 minus y1 squared. So in essence the distance formula is actually the Pythagorean theorem. So when I write down our distance formula right here and right now you will know where it comes from. The distance between two points on a Cartesian coordinate system is equal to the square root of the difference in x's squared plus the difference in y's squared. So here's our distance formula. Distance is equal to the square root 
of the quantity x2 minus x1 squared plus the quantity y2 minus y1 squared. Now let's use it. Let's say that we're given two points. Let's say that we're given um, 4 comma 5 and another point at negative 2, negative 6. And we want to find the distance between the two points. To do that, we use our distance formula. Our distance formula is the square root of the quantity x2 minus x1 squared plus the quantity y2 minus y1 squared. So our first step is going to label them as x1, y1, x2, y2. So we have x1, y1, x2, y2. Our second step is to plug them into our equation. So we would plug in our x2, which is negative 2, minus our x1, which is 4. And then we add to that our y2, which is negative 6, minus our y1, which is 5, and square it. Now remember your order of operations. If you do not use your order of operations, you will be in big trouble, especially in this case. Because you have to do things in a certain order or you will get an erroneous answer. Erroneous, of course, means full of error. So let's try not to get something that is full of error and get something that is more delicious. Like something full of ice cream or blue cheese. So we have negative 2 minus 4. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 5 is negative 11. Negative 6 squared is not the same thing as this negative 6 squared. By the order of operations, this one says you do your exponent first, then you multiply. So doing the exponent first means that we'd have negative 36. And then when you multiply, you'd bring the negative in and you'd have negative 36. When we have negative 6 on the inside of a set of parentheses and square it, we do the exponent or the things, sorry, we do the things that are on the inside of the grouping symbol first, meaning that the negative has already been included. And then we square it by multiplying it by itself. Negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. So, looking on our right, or sorry, our left, we have 36 plus negative 11 squared is 121. Adding them together, we get 157. So the distance between them is the square root of 157. If you wanted to get a decimal equivalent answer, you would probably require a calculator. And pulling out my calculator, I get 12.52996409. So 12.52996409. Four zero nine, and it keeps going for all eternity. I don't know about you guys, but I do not want to keep on writing for all eternity. So leaving it in this format is good. Putting it into this format, unless you have to use it somewhere else, not so good. So leave it as its simplest form. Leave it as the square root of 157. We can't really do anything with it. Just leave it as that. You will find it makes your life infinitely easier, especially in upper division mathematics. Okay. 
So we have seen an example of the midpoint formula. We have seen an example of the distance formula. It is now your turn. However, because of the abuse of the time that I have given you for doing homework, it's no longer due the next day. This is now before you go work. Meaning it needs to be turned in to the box before you leave my classroom. This is before you go work. This is going to be section 5.5 numbers 1 through 10 odd 15 19 21 25 and 30. These are due before you leave my classroom today. So go ahead and get to them. Good luck and have fun.